Malcolm X, the political uh, leader uh, of the civil rights movement, uh, said uh, back in the 60s, uh, the most disrespected person in America is the black woman. Uh, and he said that as a kind of uh, playing into the hierarchy, playing into how civil rights movement had to address the uh, lives of black women uh, because, uh, because a political... Um, um, Change was needed, according to Malcolm X. And the other quote I, I have here is from a, a female uh, collective in the mid '70s called the Comba, uh, Combahee River Collective, and they wrote uh, a statement, a kind of a manifesto for their work. And there, they, and there they, among other things, uh, write as follow: We believe that the most profound and potentially most radical politics come directly from our own identity, as opposed to working. Um, uh, working to end somebody else's oppression. We believe that sexual politics under patriarchy is as pervasive in black women's lives as the politics of class and race. So what this collective says in a, in a kind of a radical statement of, about political change and, 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 and uh, the radical politics they were working with is that understanding sexuality, uh, gender relations, Class and race were all necessary, and they wanted to take as point of departure their own being in the world. Um, state, starting from the question, what, it is, what is it like to be us as black women in the US? And this is one of the key places we find what you also can read about these days in the newspapers and so on. This is, this is identity politics as it used to be. Identity politics taking a statement from uh, uh, the presence of the uh, actors in this political movement saying that we as black women in the US have these political desires, these political projects to, to, to be, have equal rights and, and become cit equal citizens. And of course, talking about this kind of uh, radicality in, in, uh, in politics, and then uh, having um, Beyonce as the as my case uh, is kind of a, a of um, paradox. I mean, Beyonce is uh, super rich. She's a globally known uh, popular music star, um, and I'm not trying to say that Beyonce is in any way comparable to the women who wrote this uh, manifesto. But I'm saying that understanding, trying to trying to uh, um, see how Beyonce is relating to gender and race in her music might actually give us some insights into a more a particular dimension of her music than simply being uh, a popular music star. So let us uh, take uh, another musical example and you will hear in the some of the samples in here that you will hear some spoken words that I will come back to after. This is Flawless from uh, 2013. The framing of that video with a music competition is actually historical footage from when Beyonce was a teenager. Um, and here it's used as a kind of a frame to uh, what's um, a culture uh, that may or may not have valued uh, white male rockers in front of black uh, uh, female uh, hip hop r &B, uh, musicians. But it's also related to a kind of historical uh, expectancy following from being born with one or one gender or another. Uh, and of course, if, you, if we then look at, at the main video, uh, Beyonce is using, on the visual side, she's using a lot of signs uh, relating both to gender uh, and to, to, to class, um, where she, you might say that she's playing a role, and thus that the fact that Beyonce, the performer, is uh, uh, enormously rich and wealthy, may not actually have a, uh, be that important for what story is going on in the music video. And of course, a, a huge part of popular music studies, not all of it, but a huge part of it is, is also related to music video and the visuals uh, get strong. So, so the visuals can color over. I will speak a bit more about music in some of the other examples I have. But, but on the visual side here, Beyonce is sort of perfor posing, performing in front of a camera um, and if you listen together with the lyrics, there's also here about the expectancy of being a woman. Uh, 
Uh, and the expectancy of being a woman uh, is is underlined by the sample that Beyonce, uh, the, the sample Beyonce used, which is uh, a speech done by the uh, Nigerian um, um, author uh, uh, Shimamanda uh, Adichie, uh, and in her uh, short book uh, "We Should All Be Feminists." And and what Adichie is reading in in, in the background is is this. We teach girls to shrink themselves, to make themselves smaller. We say to girls, you can have ambitions, but not too much. You should aim to be successful, but not too successful. Otherwise, you will threaten the man. And it's slightly bit later. Because I am female, I'm expected to aspire to marriage. I'm expected to make my life uh, choices, always keeping in mind that marriage is the most important. Marriage can be a good thing, a source of joy, love, and mutual support. But why do we teach girls to aspire to marriage, yet we don't teach boys to do the same? And obviously, from a Scandinavian uh, point of view, this might sound pretty old school, uh, uh, as, as, as I guess we would agree that there's more kind of a gender equality in, in pedagogy and in schooling of uh, girls and boys and others uh, here in Scandinavia. So this this also speaks into Aditya speaking from a particular situation, uh, from a, um, a West African uh, situation. Uh, but still, Beyonce takes this sample, this text, and samples it uh, in to her track. Um, and the book by DJ has also been translated into Danish, so it has some kind of resonance for a leadership for a readership here as well. And what I think that this uh, lyrics here, the sample is using for Beyonce's, uh, Beyonce's uh, performance is also that she takes her position as a, a black southerner, a US citizen, and um, combine it with this uh, um, um, Af African author and, and try to sort of address in general, in a global sense, uh, perhaps not the solution, but the question how are gender hierarchies working in society today? And she says that there's a double, there, there is a double standard. And I think uh, at least that, that's my uh, impression when I speak with my students at the university as well. Most of us have been in situations where we have noticed that there are double standards. That... Um, that um, uh, uh, the demands for uh, female students and male students may be, may be different in school, that the stereotypes that boys are noisy and, we, uh, and girls are neat, uh, all those kinds of stereotypes are still alive, even if we think that we are very much um, equal. And Beyonce is using this into uh, uh, both a global situation, but also a, a US situation. One of my black friends uh, told me um, that when he was uh, about to go to college, he had what he called the 10 times talk with his uh, father. And the 10 times talk was uh, the father saying to the black son, remember, you have to be 10 times as good as the white students to get the same result. Uh, and he's a man more or less my age. And he spoke as if this is a talk we all have with, with our parents and we continue to have it with the kids because the point of entry into an education system is already uh, already uh, unequal, so to speak. Um, and, and another friend of mine who grew up in, in, in uh, Jackson, Mississippi, he told me he had not seen a white uh, pupil in school until his 10th uh, grade. Uh, and we're talking uh, early 80s. So he actually went to an all-black school uh, in, in uh, Mississippi because the white kids went to another school. Uh, so... so um, even if Beyonce is, is uh, she's born in 84, if I remember correctly. So, so it's a bit later, but she is, she is also speaking into a, a country where, uh, well, of course, racism as such is also uh, prevalent, but race relations, the, the, the way that uh, being racialized, being black, is a part of how you maneuver in, in the world is part of it. And the video we just saw is also challenging those views on how, um, how a proper woman is, is supposed to, to behave. 
one of the things that Beyonce is doing throughout her, her music is to take control of her musical production. That's why I also showed that uh, live rehearsal thing where she said she simply set up this female collective. We are playing music together. We don't have these um, rules outside of, of uh, we, we, we can make our own rules. We can ha we can take control of the situation. Our female agency is determining uh, the music we, we make. Uh, and she's also doing uh, another thing, as we saw in the in the video here, that she is insisting on not necessarily being a nice girl, but insisting on being a girl that is in control of her own sexuality and her, her own gender performance. So, so at one and the same time, she's performing for our uh, gays. We, can, we watch her. Uh, and she is also insisting that this club, this dance place for outcasts, if you saw on all the people, you could see that there are some dimensions of, of punk, black punk uh, scene. There are some dimensions of... of uh, there are signs of sexual minorities in that video, even, the, even if they are not, not uh, up front. And, and it's, it's, it's this establishing of a collective that, that insists on, on, on uh, taking their own uh, place in the world. And in addition to that, um, Beyonce also, also uh, performs her music, stage her music, of course, together with all the people that are helping uh, and collaborating with her. And when I say Beyonce now, I mean both her as a person performer, but also the whole uh, production management around her. But she's using this position as a as, uh, um, female superstar to also uh, address uh, politics outside of uh, her own life and also historical politics. And for me, uh, the first video to, to uh, the Lemonade album, the Formation video, who was uh, released five years ago, uh, two days ago, two days ago it, was, it was five years since it was uh, released. Uh, that video changed changed a lot. Um, she she released it uh, out of the blue um, on on a Friday evening, and my uh, Facebook and Twitter feed were ninety five percent beyond in three hours after that video were released. People were engaging with it, trying to write about it. What does it mean? What are all the references? So, so there's a huge material of, of critics and academics having written about this piece. And, and it opens in New Orleans. There's references to New Orleans. There's references to Hurricane Katrina, uh, which was a, a natural disaster, but devastated uh, New Orleans uh, and, and took a long time for, for people to get help. And there's a long black and, and brown uh, people, uh, people of color history in New Orleans, obviously, that Beyonce is dropping into. So there's references to the Caribbean, there's references to religious practices such as hoodoo and voodoo, and there's uh, references to, to, to a long history. And then all the way up to, to what was uh, very much on stake in 2016 with uh, young uh, black um, kids being killed by the police. So you will see a scene where, where there's a little a tiny kid standing with his hands uh, above his head in front of the police. And just one day after uh, Beyonce uh, released the video we are to, supposed to see, she did her, uh, her uh, um, performance at the Super Bowl in 2016. And, and uh, all her singers dressed in, in, in black with this uh, half army-ish uh, cap. So they were illustrating the Black Panther with a Black Panther uh, fist and so on. And they set an X uh, on the field uh, as a kind of, of um, uh, re um, reference to Malcolm X. And, and quite a bit of Republican white uh, America, in particular uh, Rudy Giuliani, he actually tried to stop the possibility that Beyonce should have police protection at her concerts that year because he claimed that she was uh, uh, getting uh, al al allied with, with cop killers, as he said. But let us see the video, and I have a few more things to say about it after. Uh, there are footage here from documentaries, and there's um, uh, a lot of historical layers of, of, uh, of uh, New Orleans or... Uh, 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 Louisiana uh, history. So 
not only is this a, a visual reference to a lot of uh, New Orleans history, um, but there's also a, a kind of a reinterpretation of that history into, uh, into uh, another kind of story than, uh, than uh, especially white America or perhaps also uh, Europe want to know. Um, what Beyonce is doing, or what her uh, directors are doing, uh, she has a hand in on it uh, as well, is, is to sort of uh, formulate a positive uh, US black uh, past. Uh, not, iso not isolated, because the, the, um, the whole history of being black in the US is, is also um, impinged on, on um, the middle passage, slavery, uh, racism, institutional racism, and so on. Uh, but that story, uh, as a kind of a dominating story, even, even in quite a bit of, of uh, black scholarly work, also needs the counter history, needs the pride, needs the agency, needs the, uh, the kind of, of uh, uh, see what we contribute to the world. Um, so when she is having uh, hoodoo priests uh, uh, and priestesses in here, she is also uh, referencing how hoodoo is a living tradition among blacks in the South. Uh, and, and New Orleans is an interesting uh, story there. I've seen some scholars claiming that New Orleans shouldn't be understood as, as South uh, USA. It should be understood as the North of the Caribbean. Uh, and, and that opens up for some kind of a relation between different kinds of, of uh, cultural forms and also different kinds of, of musical forms. Um, you could also see in this, in this uh, um, video how Beyonce is centering women again. So th there's a kind of, in opposition to the Malcolm X quote I had in the beginning, there's an opposition to saying that where Malcolm X says that black women are, so to speak, on, on the bottom of a social pyramid, Beyonce is sort of trying to turn that pyramid around, center black women and, and black women's uh, cultural expression, both in dancing and, and in uh, musicianship. And then there's come, come the other thing that I need to say, and it's almost like a parenthesis in my talk, but I just want to address it. And if you want to, we can talk about it later. Uh, because how do we, uh, or how do I, as, as, as a white Scandinavian at all, um, think that I'm able to read these signs of black culture, both in the music and, and in the visuals. Um, do, what do we know uh, as, as, uh, through our schooling and, and, and so on about black culture? And of course, uh, on the music side, both, uh, all of us that have been working with, with music in the 20th century, call it popular music or whatever we want to call it, uh, the, the non-classical uh, music, uh, we are, of course, uh, knowledge, knowledgeable about some of the uh, history of black music. Perhaps not. Perhaps we haven't thought about what, what will it say for music to sound black. Uh, we might just say, think, how can we play what used to be called jazz uh, as good as possible, for example, rather than thinking about it as, as a racial form. Uh, um, but, but in... For a lot of musicians in the US, the fact that their music is black music is super important to them. And they want to sort of keep it black. Uh, not saying that other people cannot play black music, but the relation between the music and the culture is important. Uh, and and for uh, and you have probably heard about the terms like cultural appropriation, for example, and, and, and that is one of the terms coming in here. But the other term uh, coming in is, um, what the music means in the cultural setting and how can we at all imagine ourselves into a cultural setting where we understand what is going on not necessarily on equal foot as if we were born into the culture but at least trying not to misrepresent trying not to misunderstood uh, understand and so on and so forth and i have no easy i have no easy uh, solution to it i have a really hard solution to it because uh, i mean for me at least uh, it is about immersing myself in the music, but also in the culture around it, reading up, trying to understand as much as possible about black lives and about black cultural formations and, and how they might differ from what I grew up with. So when Beyonce is, for, is, 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 for example, here is showing that the, 
the black cowboy uh, uh, in the streets of, of New Orleans. That's also a, a reminder to white America that no, the cowboy culture was not white only, even if that is how it almost had looked, say, in Western movies for, for the 20th century. There was a huge cohort of black cowboys. So it's an important part of African-American history as well. When, when, when she, she uh, addresses the Mardi Gras party there, she also takes that, even though it, it's a kind of a sign of New Orleans uh, without any racial markers, she introduces it into to, uh, um, a black culture. And she, she, she does that by, by this combination of different, uh, different uh, layers. And she also had guest musicians here. So you could hear uh, Big Frida in the background, for example, who was hardly known outside of New Orleans when this video came. And Big Frida is um, um, a trans person, a uh, trans radio personality in, in uh, New Orleans. Now also she's on, on albums and have been touring because this was a kind of a break uh, to, to a larger uh, context. And that's also one of the things that Beyonce is using her, her platform as a superstar to sort of uh, reach out to other uh, minorities, if you, if you will, and, and, and help people's career in that sense. So it's, it's, it's also, I would say, it's also kind of an educational program to sort of uh, use her platform telling stories uh, that, that needs to be told. And then the lyrics here, um, now ladies get information as it says. That's both a formation as in a dance formation, but it's also information, learn your story. Uh, learn, uh, learn your culture, also learn the story that uh, has been suppressed, that you're not supposed to, to tell. For example, the story of, of hoodoo and alternative uh, practices. One of my friends told me that um, when he was, uh, as a kid, when he was, uh, when he was ill, um, his mother used to put different kind of, uh, and different colors of candle around the room, lighting them. And that is actually part of a hoodoo practice where lights in different colors uh, are supposed to have different kinds of effects on the mood, uh, mo mood of a room. You can also do, do different scents or different spices and so on that have uh, a cultural uh, significance as, as, as uh, healing and medicine. Um, and this is, this, these are live traditions among uh, at least parts of, of the black community in the, in the U.S. leading back to those... Um, Hoodoo uh, practitioners that that uh, was shown in this video, and and important, a lot of these practices have been have been female, and we could make even though that's not the musical uh, argument I'm making now, but we can make that argument as well, thinking about our own music culture. Some musical forms have been primarily practiced by female practitioners. I'm not saying it. I'm not talking about art now. I'm talking about music like lullabies, for example. Historically, lullabies has mostly been, been sung by, by women. These days, I would hope it's more equal. And, but, but this also have, have had consequence that cultural forms like lullabies that have mostly been pra uh, practiced by, by women have not been studied, uh, studied as much as other musical forms. Um, and... and, and in the musical sense here, it's not that obvious with Beyonce uh, use that argument, but on the visual side, she's, she's stressing it. And she's also stressing, if you take the whole uh, Lemonade uh, video that I've been, that formation is a part of, she's also stressing both the, uh, both the South, uh, South sta uh, Southern states of the US and also the, the uh, uh, African background of, of, uh, of African-American culture uh, with, uh, uh, goddesses uh, and gods from Yoruba religion, for example, that she's using, or religious symbols from uh, from uh, Yoruba mysticism that she's using into a kind of a collage almost of all kinds black into into one uh, one uh, future. And one reason for me being interested in that, and now I'm taking you in a slightly different uh, direction uh, for my my. Uh, I have, a, I have a long ending now, but I know where I'm heading, hopefully. Um, because um, I'm, as, I, as I told, uh, as I said uh, in the beginning, I'm also interested in, in the relation between uh, music and uh, science fiction or Afrofuturism or, or 
music music being about other worlds, music be showing other kinds of worlds than uh, the practical uh, everyday life we are living. Uh, and that doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't have to be sci-fi uh, music as, as showing us some, some future world of harmony is, is one way of thinking about music that, that has been found uh, among a lot, uh, lot of composers and musicians, or a musician feeling uh, that exhausted and being in a different world when play, playing is, is, is well documented. But, but Beyonce is actually, would be my argument, she's actually using both herself and, and in collaboration with others, uh, as my last video, I have two more videos I will, want to share with you. Uh, but she's also using this, um, and, and there's a relation between the, the women in formation now and the women in her video for, for Run, the World's, uh, Run the World Girls, where you have um, a kind of fantasy space, fantasy like sci-fi fantasy, this, this alternative world where power dynamics are different, where, where um, um, as, as sci-fi authors, you would actually be, be uh, constructing a different world. And I think that that is one of the things that is happening in, the, in, in this video. And I think that Beyonce is using both, both dance and her genre references of music to illustrate that this is, this, is, uh, this is an alternative world that we are supposed to be able to speculate uh, about and, and immerse in. Uh, and I will say a bit more about it when, when we have seen it. Look at also how, how uh, and both listen to the music, but also look how she's using uh, gender and race uh, in, in an interplay in, in, in the story in this video. Slightly dependent on what your uh, references are to sci-fi movies or, or, or uh, the likes, uh, there's somewhere here between uh, Mad Max and, and uh, Black Panther uh, staged as, as one of it. You could see in, in, the, in the clothing, as, especially some of the shoes. Uh, and on the other hand, there is with the lyrics and the dancing. There, there's also there's also a, a kind of a um, challenge to gender hierarchies. Not only stating the obvious that women, girls, females may be more in power than than they have actually been been uh, credited for, but also in in the power relations. Excuse me, that are seen in in the video. And of course, um, you might ask, is this not just me? reading stuff into the video that I want to see there. Um, a lot of criticism of Beyonce when it comes to gender and sexuality is that, well, obviously she is doing what she's supposed to do in a patriarchal capitalist culture. She is showing skin and she is playing with her body and, and, and her sexuality as part of her performance. And it's nothing new. It's the same that Madonna did. It's the same that have been criticized all, all the way at that. To success is to succeed in, in pop culture as a woman, you have to sort of play on sex or whatever it's called. Um, and of course, that can be discussed. It's, it's, it's possible uh, to, to uh, discuss uh, musicians' relation to their gender performance in different ways. Um, but firstly, I'm not quite sure that um, playing, having, having sex or sexuality as one part of your performance is, is nothing new. And it's not as if men are not doing it as well. So that can be discussed on different levels. Um, and, and the other thing I would say, and you have hopefully seen it in, in, in the uh, videos so far, a lot of what Beyonce is doing is actually quite directed towards a kind of a collectivity of, of uh, women. It's as if, I mean, it's not that men are not allowed to watch these movies and so on, but it's as if she's underlining a, a femininity or a femaleness, both in herself, her band, and her audience. Um, the first thing, the first time I saw her live um, was here in Copenhagen at, in, uh, at Forum. Um, and we were... I think we were about, about 9,000 people in that concert, and I think it was about 250 men, and the rest were uh, a female audience uh, in their 20s and 30s. It was a very interesting place to be for me, to sort of feel this uh, other kind of audience than a lot of other um, uh, musical venues I've been to. I hope you all remember how it was to go to concerts. Um, so, so, so there's something about 
there's something about even even her uh, audience being um, kind of female dominated, which uh, which is a challenge for me to sort of say, okay, are there any differences in communication between between men and women that that I'm not aware of? And it might be. I don't. I, I I'm I'm not sure. I I hope I have some clue, but but not sure. But as I said, here here is is sort of also. Um, a statement into an alternative world, and and I wanted to to end with, um, and I'm not going to play the whole video. I'm going to 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 skip a middle part of the next video. Uh, it's only it only features Beyonce. She is not uh, she is not the main uh, artist here, but it's it's a video by by her husband. Um, so so it's also all in the family, and um, a really old statement also here in Europe of, about uh, classic. Uh, feminist position in in uh, in uh, uh, also in so-called white feminism is to say that the, the personal is political, uh, and I think that the vid videos I have shown now uh, also also demonstrate that Beyonce, by taking herself as point of departure, uh, singing and performing from her own subject position as a light-skinned black. Uh, southerner uh, women in the U.S. She is using that position to to address questions that are not only about her herself and her subjectivity, but are about people who uh, look or feel uh, like her in different ways. Um, so, a lot of her albums are have some kind of autobiographic uh, relation as well. And Lemonade that I spoke about has often been interpreted as a kind of uh, almost a breakup album with between her and, and her husband. And her husband's uh, album after that was seen as him uh, apologizing or explaining or whatever. But even taking all that personal away, there's something uh, true that personal that comes out that are uh, important in other ways. And and the video to to um, uh, family vote from two thousand and seventeen, uh, directed by uh, by Ava um, um is sort of starts out with a quote from from James Baldwin, who who is an extremely important uh, African American author who has gotten a renaissance now the last uh, three four five years, uh, as as addressing. Uh, the politics for Black America, uh, but it starts with a quote from him, and then it moves into a kind of a sci-fi story, and we can see how uh, the video moves back and forth in time, and we end up um, in 2050, I think, with um, a new political structure with a collective of presidents, and and you, as you will see, they are they are female sitting deciding the future of the U.S. So here is a kind of um, sci-fi take on on how <clears throat> femininity or femaleness uh, can be the political power that that brings the world into a better place as you could see uh, it's it's not it's not even a music video any longer it's a short uh, short movie uh, that has a music video part uh, to it um, and here, uh, Beyonce is singing together with the sample, but also just singing a few notes. Uh, but again, uh, there's uh, these layers of references from the from the personal to uh, uh, that is uh, a kind of uh, ID that uh, their daughter should become uh, president in the U.S. in 2050. Uh, to to uh, this story that starts out in 2444, as if we are after some kind of radical world world change um and i'm not saying there are no white people in the video because there are but it's also a video that is grounded in black culture grounded in 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 um some black stories uh, and you could see it both uh, with 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 the beyonce character as well who have this uh, huge uh, hat on top that is resembling a kind of uh, ancient egyptian uh, kind of head head gear um, that she also used uh, later on when she performed at Coachella. So what she's doing, and I'm, I'm, I'm coming to an end now with what I want to say, what she's, what she's doing, in my view, is to sort of um, take black culture, sonic culture, visual culture, cultural references, 
she's taking that into her music, using it in the kind of remixing for uh, for telling stories that center uh, uh, black women uh, that are about negotiation of of uh, blackness in the U.S. Um, and while it's a bit more difficult, it will take some more time for me to do it. Uh, she's doing some of the same with uh, uh, with musical dimensions. She's sort of referencing, um, sampling, uh, quoting, referencing uh, different layers, different historical layers of black music culture going back to 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 the beginning of the U.S. Uh, trying all the way to to of course be a successful pop musician, uh, but but. But that that part of her uh, of her uh, musicianship is is uh, in my view uh, we we get to see some other dimensions at stake in in her music outside of the music itself. If we if we um, manage to focus upon how she uh, performs and relates to uh, race uh, and uh, gender. <laughs> 